This is Roland Lucas and in this video I'm going to show you how manual therapy can be used to improve tissue quality. In a prior video we defined restorative mechanotherapy as a rehabilitation strategy that uses mechanical stimuli to enhance musculoskeletal tissue quality and improve activity tolerance. I also showed how restorative mechanotherapy is one of the three primary rehabilitation paradigms. In review, restorative mechanotherapy targets poor quality connective tissue with mechanical stimuli, tissue deformation due to mechanical stimulus results in cellular activation leading to the production of new collagen and a remodeled connective tissue that is more activity tolerant. The mechanical deformation that occurs during certain types of manual therapy may initiate cellular mediated connective tissue regeneration and adaptation. Previously I showed that for exercises and manual techniques to be considered restorative mechanotherapy, they should be tissue specific of appropriate intensity and mimic activity demands. To explore how manual therapy might be used as restorative mechanotherapy, please consider a patient with discogenic neck pain. Here are three commonly applied treatments for discogenic neck pain. Manual traction. Soft tissue mobilization. And joint mobilization. Now let's consider each of these manual techniques relative to our criteria for restorative mechanotherapy. As you can see, manual traction does not meet the three criteria for restorative mechanotherapy. Neither does soft tissue mobilization because it's not tissue specific. Of the three manual techniques, joint mobilization is the one that most closely represents the criteria for restorative mechanotherapy. When soft tissue mobilization is directed to symptomatic soft tissue structures, it is considered restorative mechanotherapy. As long as the intensity is sufficient enough to initiate connective tissue adaptation or regeneration. Some forms of manual therapy are too gentle to initiate connective tissue remodeling and therefore much less likely to be used as restorative mechanotherapy. As mentioned previously, for a manual technique to be considered restorative mechanotherapy, it has to target the symptomatic area. If the manual technique is applied away from the symptomatic area, it may be considered biomechanical optimization. Treatments with the sole intent of easing pain do not fall into one of the three primary rehabilitation paradigms. However, pain relief may facilitate progress with treatments in the other categories. It is pretty clear from the evidence that manual therapy has a strong temporary neurophysiological effect. 
However, there is also preliminary evidence suggesting that manual therapy does have a mechanical effect and therefore still has the potential to initiate connective tissue remodeling. For manual therapy to be considered restorative mechanotherapy, it should target the symptomatic tissues. The loading should mimic the activity demands as much as possible. The load should exceed what is customary to initiate remodeling. The technique should allow progression of mechanical stress as the tissue adapts over time. And the technique should not be being used primarily for pain relief. Thank you for taking the time to watch these three introductory videos on restorative mechanotherapy.